hands lifted high, let's sing it. Your presence is heaven to me. We seek your face, O oh Lord. Your presence is heaven to me. Just say, Lord, you're my desire this morning. You're my desire. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Retainer of my past and present wrongs. Holder of my future days to come. With our voices singing, come on. Your presence is presence, Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Let's sing it together. All my days on earth I will away. The moment that I see you face to face. Nothing in this world will satisfy But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Let's lay it down and sing it, come on Nothing in this world will satisfy But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Pray in the name of Jesus. 
and we are saved from all the scourges of life. A strong tower that gives us a height above every opposition. A strong tower that makes us taller than our challenges. It is a name that when we stand on, we look at the devil as a dwarf. When we stand on the name of the Lord Jesus, our lives become invincible to forces of evil. No one accesses our lives the moment we have the privilege to stand on that name. And what a joy to know that after salvation, you and I have the right to stand on that name. We have the right to call on that name. And by faith, whenever this name is called upon, issues of our lives are sorted. The cup of our trophy, that our trophy is handed into our hands. Father, we appreciate you once again. It is good to know the, the potency that is in your name. We appreciate you even for the privilege to call on this name at all times. Thank you for yet another opportunity to call on that name as we learn at your feet, as we pray in today's midday prayer. Let that name answer in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, 
Amen. Praise the Lord. It is with great joy in my heart that I welcome everyone that is already online right now to today's midday prayer on the Travel of Hannah platform. Hallelujah. I'm glad seeing so many of you online. Time will not allow me to mention all your names, but please know that from the depth of my heart, I sincerely recognize all of you, your tireless sacrifices to connect online and to be part of this service. May heaven smile over you with joy. Have you shared this broadcast? I know it will not cost you anything to share this broadcast. It will only cost your obedience to click the share button. I want you to share this broadcast. Share the gospel. Reach out. He says there are so many uh, 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 flocks that are not of this fold. Jesus speaking in the book of John chapter 10. He said there are so many that are not of this fold. He said that, but they must be brought. He will bring them, and God will bring them to this fold using you. Therefore, I would like you to spare just a few minutes and share the broadcast as I also get the worship background. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again because your faithfulness is new every day. Even this hour, you are exalted as king above all kings. Sweet spirit of the living God, I welcome you. I ask that you take preeminence in this atmosphere. Lord, take the lead and let your intended word and even the prayer point, Father, be made known to every one of us. I ask that you cause us to live today's midday prayer, refresh, knowing that we have spent quality time in your presence. The glory that is due to you, Father, I vow I will give it to you always as I have always done. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. If you're sensitive in the spirit, you will know that the atmosphere is so full. And when I talk about the atmosphere being so full, it is not with evil. I kept sensing, especially today, early hours of the day, and even while I was preparing, the cloud are so full for a major outpouring. Major outpouring. God is in a hurry to pour an unusual blessing upon the saints. I want you to key in and position yourself. Don't allow this cloud that is moving to leave you behind. Some write a song and say the cloud of glory is moving. Let us move with the cloud. I want you to shut down anything that will distract you. Because the catching up moment is now. The catching up moment is not tomorrow. It is now. Something is in the atmosphere. It's so strong. I feel it. I don't know whether it relates to some of you that are already online. But I know so real that you will share your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many good things in the pipeline. And these good things in the pipeline are not for anyone else. The good things in the pipeline are for you. These good things are waiting in the pipeline to come to pass, especially in this last quarter of 2021. I refer to the things I'm talking about as good things because in John, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, the Bible says that God knows, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. He said they are thoughts of good. So the things in the pipeline that are waiting to come to pass in your life, I repeat, in this last quarter of 2021, they are not horrible things. They are good things. Because according to Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the description of the thoughts of God is made known to each and every one of us. 
He said they are good thoughts. They are thoughts of good. They are not thoughts of evil. So that the end that God has specifically ordained for you shall be duly realized. I call them good things waiting on the pipeline to come to pass. Because according to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8, the Bible says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. We just have a few months to end the year 2021. Scripture says better is the end. You could be listening to me and you began the year in a grand star. Everything just lined up for you from January, even as I speak now. But the truth is, according to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 8, the Bible says still better is the end of a matter than the beginning thereof. This still confirms that there are very many good things in the pipeline. They are already in the pipeline waiting to come to pass because the end of the matter must be better than the beginning. And you know what the Bible says? God's word will not return to him void. It must accomplish its purpose. There are good things because the Bible in John chapter 2 and verse 10, according to John 2, 10, the Bible made us understand that God preserves the best for the end. Remember, in that marriage in the Cana of Galilee, the Bible says, when they needed wine, they realized it was finished. But at your own time, read it. And in verse 9, one of the governors had to ask that in every occasion, people serve the best at the beginning. And when the, 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 the invited guests are satisfied, then they bring out the worst. He said, but as for you in this kind of occasion, you have kept the best for the end. There are good things in the pipeline for you. I have come to learn that God reserves the best for the end because there are so many hit and run believers. He preserves the best for the end because it is only those that continue to the end, those that will not faint to the end, that qualify to partake of the good things that he specifically reserves for the end. They are good things because according to Psalms chapter 65 and verse 11, the Bible says he crowns the year with his goodness and our, fat, and our parts dropped fatness. Listen to me. One does not have to wait until December before you start claiming that God is crowning the year for you with goodness. The crowning of the year with goodness in your life and in my life can actually begin now. The reason why I'm saying it can actually begin now because the word that God gave us at the beginning of the year still stands. It is a margin of new experience. The scripture God gave us is Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. He said, O thou Bethlehem, Ephrata. He said, Out of thee shall come forth. Out of thee something unusual. What you least expected. What people have time will never happen in your life. He say, Oh Bethlehem, Ephrata, although you are the least, but out of you, something is coming out of you. Something is springing out of you. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the state you are. Something is springing out of you. That's why I want you to believe that there are good things in the pipeline. If there is a force that makes evil keep occurring, who told you that there is no force that also make good things to take to happen in our lives? The force of God has ability to effect, you know, strange, unbelievable, unarguable changes in our lives. How will it happen before we pray? In Deuteronomy chapter 28, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want you to tell yourself that there are so many good things in the pipeline for me waiting to come to pass. Hallelujah. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass. <laughs> and it shall come to pass. 
without any iota of doubt, it shall come to pass. Yours is also coming to pass. Mine is coming to pass and it shall come to pass. If thou shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, so the good things waiting in the pipeline shall only come to pass if you diligently, if you carefully hearken to the voice of God. It is crucial for you to hearken to the voice of God because there are so many voices, especially in a time like this. Most of the time when we are at the last quarter of the year, we hear many voices. There are many voices seeking your audience. But the Bible says it will only come to pass. Emphasis from me. It will only come to pass. The good thoughts of God for your life will only come to pass. The end will be better when you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. I want you to understand that the voice that matters the most in your life is the voice of God. The voice that matters the most in my life is the voice of God. And according to this scripture, that is the voice to hearken to. The voice that matters to you even at the state you are right now is the voice of God. The Bible says if you can hearken to the voice of God irrespective, irrespective of your situation or your predicament, you, what you are anticipating, what your expectation is, shall come to pass. Nothing come to pass except there is a woman somewhere, except there is a man somewhere that is intentionally happening to the voice of God. If it is emergence of new experience, then I'm ready to hearken to the voice of God. If it is a crowning restoration, then I'm ready to hearken to the voice of God. If it is supernatural turn around, whatever it is, he say it shall come to pass. I emphasize the voice that matters the most in your life. The voice that matters the most is the voice of God. And that is the voice to happen to, to hearken to. Like I said, the voice of pain is seeking your audience. That doctor's report, when you hold it, sometimes you don't even hold it. As you see, there is a voice seeking your audience to stamp a soliciting, to confirm that that is who you are. The Bible says, It shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. May I ask therefore, which voice have you been hearkening to? The most important voice, the voice that matters is the voice of God. He said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Listen to me. As long as it is not the voice of God, give it no audience. It doesn't matter how your temperature is. It doesn't matter how you might have woken up this morning. As long as it is not the voice of God, give it no audience. In that marriage, as long as it is not the voice of God, give it no audience. In that business, if it is not the voice of God, give it no audience. If it is not the voice of God, give it no attention at all. You know what the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 10 and verse 5. Let's read John chapter 5, 10 verse 5. It says, and the stranger, let me just open it. John chapter 10 and verse 5. The Bible says, and a stranger they will not follow but they will flee from him for they know not the voice of a stranger <laughs> they know not the voice of a stranger and because they don't know the voice of a stranger they can't hearken to it and because they don't know the voice of a stranger they are not permitted to follow 
I wrote in my note, not following the voice of a stranger will begin from not listening to that voice. Listen to me, beloved. You are not created to know the voice of a stranger. He said the voice of a stranger, they will not follow because they don't know it. You know what it means? They will not even hearken. They will not listen to it because they don't know it. What is the voice of a stranger? The voice of a stranger is the voice that speaks contrary to the doctrines of Christ that you have learned, that you have received. The voice of a stranger is a voice that speaks contrary to every prophetic word that you have received concerning you. Every word of God spoken either at your personal time of study or prophetically spoken into your life by servants of God. The voice of a stranger is that voice that speaks contrary to your rising, that speaks contrary to your establishment. And that's why we are here today to silence the voice of the stranger. We are here to silence. The Bible says the voice of the stranger, the voice of the stranger, they will not hear. They will not hearken. But do you know what? The greatest shock is this, that many believers are hearkening to the voice of a stranger. You went to the washroom this morning and when you look at your urine, the voice of the stranger told you that you're diabetic. That is the voice of a stranger. The voice of a stranger tells you that you will not see the end of this year. That voice that keeps speaking contrary to the doctrines of Christ that you have received and have yielded yourself to practice. The Bible admonishes us that that voice, we shouldn't hearken to it. If the good things in the pipeline will come to pass in our lives. If thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, out of you shall come forth greatness. You have to say no. You have to show the voice of a stranger and diligently, keenly listen to the voice of God. God is speaking. He spoke to you yesterday. He spoke to you last month. He spoke to you three months ago. He spoke to you at the beginning of the year. He has not ceased being God. The voice of a stranger is that voice that tells you you cannot. I shared my story with you that at a particular time in my life, spirit of fear engulfed me. How the enemy kept pointing to me my limitation. How the enemy kept showing me that I'm not able. And to some extent, I allowed the devil to have his way. I allowed that voice. But when I discovered myself, I said, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Listen to me. The only thing you cannot allow to fear, anything, the only thing you cannot allow to distract you is your limitation. Let me put it this way. Don't allow anything that comes to be your limitation to distract you. Try and distract your limitation, but don't let your limitation distract you. As I stand here today, to the glory of God, I have dealt with and have distracted anything that was trying to distract me many years ago. He said, the voice of a stranger, they will not follow. What then is the voice of God? The voice of the Lord is his word. The voice of the Lord is his word. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 23, 29, from verse 3 downward, he said, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is upon many waters. He said the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar in Lebanon. You read that account in Psalms chapter 29. It gives you diverse uh, 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 definition and description of the voice of God. The voice of God is his word. You know, there are times people send you either an email or a text message. So it could be a family friend. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. And the moment you pick that message to read, somehow you'll be hearing the voice of the person that sends the message to you. That is his or her voice in a written form. 
So the voice of God is his word. And in Psalms 29, he said that voice is powerful. So when you hearken to that voice, the reason why you will be set on high if you hearken to that voice is that the power that is in that voice finds its dwelling place in you. And it deals with every form of limitation that will not allow you to get to where God has ordained for you. That's why we'll be praying. In this last quarter of the year, you won't give audience to the voice of the enemy. You won't give. The reason, let me even say, the reason why we tend to sometimes to hear what the enemy is saying is because we are not talking. Just try it at home. Ask the people around you. Everybody should start talking. When all of you, about four of you, engage yourselves and you're all talking at the same time, it will be difficult for you to hear what the other person is saying. When you're too quiet, when you're too quiet as a child of God and you're not saying anything, you're not releasing fire, you're not praying, I tell you the truth, the devil will dump, you know, your life will be that uh, a fertile habitation for him to keep speaking. The voice of the enemy will know, will find audience. So we are here to roar up. Let the lion nature in you come alive this afternoon. I want you to lift up your voice with me and say, Father, deal with anything, any act that makes one vulnerable and thereby become victim of the voice of a stranger. It is a long prayer, but let me repeat it. Father, deal with anything, deal with any act that makes one vulnerable thereby become a victim of the voice of a stranger. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Mighty God, we come before you this afternoon. We refuse to be quiet. We refuse anything. We will not allow anything to shut our mouth. Therefore, deal with anything. Deal with any act that makes one vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of a stranger. Lift up your voice as we pray this prayer. And many of you that are online, type the prayer so that others can get it right. Father, deal with anything, deal with any act that makes one vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of a stranger. Remember the Bible says, the voice of a stranger they will not hear. Therefore, Lord, if there are people hearing the voice of a stranger, it is an indication that they have become vulnerable based on some acts in their life that have exposed them to be a victim of that voice. Lord, we come before you today that you deal with anything, deal with any act that makes one vulnerable in the lives of our children. Father, we pray that you deal with anything. We ask that you deal with any act, that you deal with any association that makes our children vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of the enemy. Lord, deal with anything, oh God. Anything in my life, oh God, Lord, that makes me vulnerable, Lord, and thereby become a victim of the voice of the enemy. Lord, deal with it. Father, deal with it. In the name of Jesus, Father, deal with it. Bareko to zebra yanta yagada. Consciously or unconsciously, the voice you hearken to becomes the driving force of your life. If the voice you're hearkening to is not the voice of God, the truth is your destination will definitely be affected. The voice you hearken to determines the driving force of your life. The voice you hearken to, you hearken to, determines the direction you face in life. Therefore, Lord, deal with anything, oh God. Deal with any act, oh God, that makes one vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of the enemy. We lay it before your altar of prayer this day in the name of Jesus Christ. Bareko to si Deal with it, O oh God. I want to remind you as we are praying that Eve's vulnerability was powered by the spirit of covetousness. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, it said, And when she saw that the fruit was good 
Let me just read it. Genesis chapter 3. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, when she saw, a man of God said, The reason why God gave us eyelids so that we can close when we want to close and we can open when we want to open. You can see this woman expose her life to the voice of the enemy because of the spirit of covetousness that was found in her. Jesus said the prince of this world came and he found nothing in me. If you need to ask God to deal with that thing that is in you, that will expose you and make you vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of the enemy. When she saw that the tree was good for food, that was all. She got carried away. She couldn't remember what God told them. He gave the instruction that of any tree of the garden, thou shalt freely eat. He said, but this one do not touch. But you can see she was insensitive. When you are insensitive in your spirit, you become a victim of the voice of a stranger. Uh -uh. Eve became a victim of the voice of a stranger. When she saw that the tree was good, I want you to lift up your voice and ask the Lord that, Father, seal up any avenue, any opening around me, oh God, any avenue that makes me to peep into things that I need not to see. Anything by the blood of Jesus, I seal it up. That makes me to keep prognosing into things that have nothing to do with me. There are people that prognose into everything and those things sometimes exposes their lives and make them vulnerable and thereby the voice of becoming the victim of the voice of the enemy. Seal up any avenue, anything around me, oh God, that makes me to keep peeping here and there. To keep peeping here and there. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. If only Eve knew her vulnerability was powered by the spirit of covetousness what is it that is powering your own vulnerability i want us to lift up our voice to pray there are some people their vulnerability is powered by the spirit of fear and the bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear. He said he gave us the spirit of sound mind and of boldness. But when we expose ourselves to the spirit of fear, when we allow the spirit of fear to gain access to our life, we become vulnerable to the voice of the stranger. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to pray that Father deal with it. Father deal with it. Father deal with it. Maraka taleko tosi brayante ligada. Rabakate lido boshin taleko sibraya makoto zipa yata ya. There are people that have gotten to a destination where God is not. There are people right now, as I speak, they are standing in places where God is not. They are born again. They are sound and they are filled with the Holy Ghost. How did they arrive there? They became vulnerable to the voice of a stranger as a result of a character that they didn't allow God to deal with in their life. I want us to pray. If we don't want the destinies of our children, the glorious destiny that God had for our children to be aborted prematurely, I want us to raise our voice and pray. Let this prayer this afternoon be an altar that you are raising over the destinies of your children. That Father deal with anything, deal with any act, deal with any association that will make my children vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of the enemy. Father deal with it in the name of Jesus Christ. Makaragadabo shantelikosia that child you carried for nine months that child you labored with at the place of delivery there is no how the glorious destiny that God have ordained for him or her will be aborted whether it is covetousness whether it is uh, fear whether it is lust of the eye the Bible says when she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes listen to me there are some things that are pleasant to the eyes, but the end thereof is destruction. 
The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. And I'm also saying there are things that are pleasant to the eyes. They are so enticing. That was how enticed Eve became. Because the spirit that she was, she was so enticed. And because she, she was overtaken by lust of the eyes, she saw that it was pleasant. The question is, for God to have shown them what to eat, it means whatever God showed them was good for them. But listen, a man or a woman that is overtaken by the spirit of lust will never see the good thing he or she has. They will never see anything good about themselves. They will keep on looking at some, someone else. They never see anything good about their height. They never see anything good about their complexion. They never see anything good about their home. They never see anything good about their marriage. That was what befell Eve. When she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired. Definitely when you keep seeing, you will desire. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and she did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. And you know, that was the beginning of their calamity. Father, you know me. Lord, you know me. When I'm sitting, you know. When I'm standing, you know. When I'm lying, you know. I ask, oh God, deal with anything in the body of Christ as believers in this end time. Father, deal with anything, any act that makes us vulnerable and thereby become a victim of the voice of a stranger. The voice you don't hear, you will not follow. The voice you don't hear, you will not pick up. Many people are looking like the voice of a stranger because that is the voice they have been hearkening to. Despite the fact God says we are not to hearken to it because we don't know it. But there is a character. There is a character that have allowed the devil to gain access. That have allowed the voice of the enemy to gain access. But I know it has been dealt with already. In the name of Jesus. And lastly we'll be saying. That father. The same Deuteronomy 28. It shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently. Hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. And to observe. To do all his commandment. He said that I command thee this day. The Lord thy God will set thee on high. Above all the nations of the earth. And he said all these blessings. Shall come on thee. And they shall overtake thee. That Father, in this last quarter of the year, as I dedicate my life to keep on hearkening, because many of us here, I know we've been hearkening to the voice of God. As I dedicate my life to keep on hearkening to your voice, bring to pass, bring to pass the blessings, bring to pass what you have in store for me in this last quarter of 2021. Lift up your voice as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I give myself wholly, as I dedicatedly give myself to hearken to the voice that matters the most in my life, to, to, to hearken, to listen every morning to the voice that matters the most in my life, to listen every afternoon to the voice that matters the most in my life. Oh God, bring to pass the good things that are in the pipeline. Bring them to pass, oh God. Bring them to pass. Because with God, there is no go and come. With God, there is no go and come back tomorrow. You can have it with you today and defy it to tomorrow. You can have it with you in this season. And Lord, allow this season, allow this last quarter to end. Father, we stand on the integrity of your word that says you crown the year with your goodness. We stand on the integrity of your word that says end of a matter is better than the beginning thereof. We stand on the integrity of your word that says you have a good thought towards us. A thought of peace and not of evil. To give us an expected end. We stand on the integrity of your word. That says you, dis you preserve the best for the end. Oh God. In this last quarter of 2021. I am not bowing my shame. Bowing my head to shame. In this last quarter. 2021. I have no portion with leftover stuffs. 
I want you to declare your life, your entire life and your family have no portion with leftover stuff. I have no portion with leftovers. I have no portion with leftovers. Makasi praya. My children have no portion with leftovers. Because the best of God is set aside for a time like this. I will be a partaker of the same. My children will be partaker of the same. The voice of the enemy, I have no part with it. As I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, my God. Lord, things that I thought were impossible, bring it to pass. Because you are never late. A songwriter sang and said, God might not come when you want him sometimes, but he's never late. Lord, I know in this last quarter of 2021, you have what it takes. The silver is yours. The gold is yours. I will not be stranded, oh God. I am saying to someone that is listening right now, in this last quarter of 2021, you will not be stranded. You will not be stranded. There are people that have gang up and they are waiting. They have in, indirectly tried to pose to be that God in your life. And because you've been gradually trying to retrace your step and your walk with God, and they're trying to hang around, waiting to see your fall. I hear me and hear me well. They will wait, but in vain. They will wait, but in vain. La Cosia, the only thing they will get to hear about you is that you are making waves. The only thing they will get to hear about you that God has already established that testimony in your life. Those who thought you have finished will get to know that God only set you aside, furnishing you to showcase you. Those who thought that that business is a write-off, they will get to know that God was just rebranding it. Rebranding it to showcase it. I tell you the truth. Rebranding for a showcase. Rebranding for a showcase. I don't know who you are. That business that people have sat and have talked, that look, <laughs> Since COVID, this one, I don't think she will pick up again. I don't think he will pick up again. You know what? They thought you are finished. They thought it is closed. God has just been in the process of rebranding for a showcasing. A rebranding for a showcasing. God cannot rebrand and showcase without attracting major clients. You used to be known locally. Shortly from now, you will be known internationally in the name of Jesus. You will receive calls from far and near, from quarters that you least expect. You know why? Because scriptures must be fulfilled in your life. Let God be true and let whatever any man is saying be a lie. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory this afternoon. Lift up your voice and appreciate him. We exalt you, mighty God. We honor you because... Whatever will have allowed the voice of the enemy to gain access to us is been dealt with vehemently. It's been dealt with already. We give you glory because, oh God, there is a formatting that has taken place. There is a factory resetting that has taken place. You know what? He said the voice of a stranger, they don't know it. They will not hear it. There is a factory resetting. When you reset your phone, it gets back to its original, the way it came from the factory. And that is the time you start downloading what you need to download. There is a resetting that has taken place that will make it impossible for you to pick the voice of the enemy because you don't know it. And that is what the word of God says. You will hear God like never before. I don't know who you are. You've been wondering that how do people hear God? Because he is your father and you are eager to hear him. You will hear him audibly in the name of Jesus. You won't need to run helter skelter ask him for confirmation. You will be convinced in your spirit that what you have heard is the voice of God. And so shall it be in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Father once again we thank you. We glorify you, O God. We honor you for your voice that is upon many waters. It cannot be upon many waters and then we are left stranded and we are left without access to that voice. We give you glory because it shall be a daily experience in our life. And let the good things that are in the pipeline, let them start rolling in. We will return and glorify your name. Hallelujah. In case you've been listening to me and you are not born again, I don't think you need to wait for any other time to make up your mind and surrender your life to Jesus because I'm sure you're convinced that there is a God in heaven that has power to forgive sins. There is a God in heaven that has power to give you opportunity to live a better life. Therefore, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, 
I am a sinner. I ran to you today and I ask that you show me mercy. Forgive me my sins. Blot out my iniquities with your blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. I renounce the work of sin. I renounce the work of Satan. I renounce the work of evil. By this confession, Jesus is my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I rejoice with you because this is the greatest decision that you have ever made in your life. And I assure you that your life will never remain the same. Locate a Bible-believing church and share your experience, this encounter with the ministers of the gospel there, and they know what to do. They will guide you, they will teach you, and they will watch you grow and be established. And in case you happen to be in Mombasa, I wouldn't mind also to ask you, there is a, I wouldn't mind to ask you to locate where we are. Sorry, the address is not even coming on, but I'm sure you'll be able to get it on the platform. I wouldn't mind to ask you to get in touch with us with the details on this platform. Hallelujah. And it will be my joy as well to do what I can by the help of God to see you established in your journey of faith. And for all of you that managed to connect today, I know you're leaving this platform with something tangible. God is not mocked. You wouldn't have, you know, set aside one hour to seek his face and go back empty. He said, for whatsoever a man saw, that shall he reap. You have invested your precious one hour to seek your, your God. I assure you that there is a reward in Jesus' name. It is time now to honor God with our offering. God will never be stranded. God is not in need of our resources, but we are in need of his resources. We always count it joy and privilege to partner with God. There are people you partner with that for ages you will be benefiting from the shares of that company, even when your, your life is over. Your next of kings benefit from such shares. These are things copied from the scripture. Listen to me. It is not an issue of you being casual. I know we are all matured. No one partners with the move of God and is left out. Don't allow the cloud of glory that is moving to leave you behind. I want you to package your offering. Give your offering right now and God of heaven will reward you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I don't know what is happening to my system today, but I believe we'll still get the... Oops. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the lives of men and women that are already online right now. I'm sure some of you already know the number. You can just type it in there. I've tried to pick it. It's hanging. Thank you, Jesus, for the lives of men and women that are already online. I appreciate you, Prince of Peace, for this opportunity that you have given us to worship you with our offerings. Father, in the first place, you gave it to us, and therefore we return with our offerings. And we ask that you use it for the advancement and the establishment of your kingdom. And in return, oh God, we ask that you establish our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let me try and call out the number for the sake of those that are online. I don't want you to, to be denied the opportunity to give your offerings. Praise the Lord. I'm looking for it. I believe I will, I will get it. God is faithful. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, Lord, because you are here. It is 0743 The Lord tremendously bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I look forward to seeing you again on the same platform come next week. Like I told us from uh, Monday that this month of October is so loaded. You can't afford to miss any of our decisions on this platform. God bless you for connecting. Thank you and bye-bye.